Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kastuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastubadas. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome back. Today's study of the Srimad Bhagavatam class, we have Kastuba and Rishikesh at the Kirtan Festival. We made it back to the farm, and uh, that's it. How are you, Mr. All, right. <laughs> All good? All good, guys? All good. Everything's good. Right. Everything's good. Mara, did we do announcements yesterday? No, we didn't. Okay, there we go. What are the announcements today? Uh, we have back to your recovery group meetings online today. The men meet at noon and the women meet at two. And there's also a local meeting for people in Alachua and Nashville today. <clears throat> Big wow. news. Yeah. Big news. And Kostuba, how is the Kirtan Festival going on? Oh, well, you know, the Kirtan Festival, I'll tell you something. Tell me. I mean, not only, I don't know the exact counts, and maybe we're, we're, we have a we have a special guest with us today. So we thought let's bring him on the show for a bit, and we'll bring him on in a moment. That's Andrew Dumaswamy, who's the main inspiration and founder, and you know, uh, visionary behind it all. Hmm. But I'll say that I would imagine it's about 300, 400 people that are attending every night, something like that. Amazing. Beautiful people you know open very open for chanting and, and happily chanting and dancing and getting fully full full-hearted participation of course you have super excellent kirtan leaders you have madhava and goravani and sri pralad and indrajuna swami himself and uh Badahari prabhu is here and uh there's there's you know big kirtans in the night and there's presentations during the day um nice. and so yeah and that's the the quality of the prasadam that they serve out. You know, there's a big feast for everyone at the, at the end, and it's exceptional. I mean, exceptional prasad. And then, you know, like every plate has to be washed, and you know, every every there's so much to put they have on. To wash the I, plates? What are you talking about? The, there's so much to be done to do it right. <laughs> sure. And I can see it's... that. I think we we're speaking about this yesterday and something, weren't we? That attention to detail. Mm. Right. It's like the love is in the details. And I can see that um, this is something that that Indrajuna Swami and I think he's instilled in, in all the other participants that are putting it on this. They're seeing to every detail and they're doing it right. And when that kind of happens, sort of magic can happen when you when uh, you, when you bring powerful mm. spiritual energies like the holy name into that kind of very thoughtful kind of presentation boom it takes off so it's 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 uh, been beautiful i'll say this you know what, I, i've got to say people still go to rishikesh it's considered the 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 the, the origin of yoga um it's, it's right kind of in the bank of the ganga it's very scenic but they come looking for god and what we have there in most of the situation is you know you have a few ashrams and you have a lot of people just sort of like trying to pander that this is what's ha happened we've exported american yoga to india i saw the yes. same thing in goa. <laughs> in I, i've seen, ways, seen yeah. the same thing in goa it's like people want an, an authentic experience but unfortunately 
what they're going to get is they're going to get a Western yoga teacher teaching in India or these Indian yoga teachers who are trying to get Yoga Alliance certified. And people just want an authentic experience. And how you get that authentic experience is from a bona fide parampara. And so when it comes through and, and, and shows up in the form of kirtan, in the form of prashadam, in the, court of, in, in the form of transcendental knowledge, people are touched, moved, and inspired. And I, I just witnessing these videos, I was like, yeah. Because I've been to Rishikesh, and I've had people come up in the midst of kirtan and say, oh, my God, this is actually what I've been looking for. I don't want to just go to some cafe and have a green smoothie. It's like, <laughs> exactly. I'm not coming to India yeah. to, to try to find American spirit, what Comforts Americans and, think spirituality yeah. is. You, so, well, you know, it's interesting that you said that, Ronald, because this morning, I, uh, as the sun was rising, you know, it's, it's kind of pretty cold here in the morning. You know, I'm, I'm kind of sure. bundled up. It was, you know, I've, I've carried this extra clothing around the whole five months I've been here, like a couple warm sweaters. And I was like, I never even wore them once, but now I'm glad that I have them. It's and cool. so, yeah, I go down there and, uh, and, you know, as the sun's rising, I go down to the river and I'm sitting on the, at the got and it's, oh, I tell you, it's so powerful. You feel the connection to all the sages of the past and they feel the Gungas, the, even the breeze, even the cold breeze, it feels like it's bringing spiritual energy <laughs> into you, you know. But as I was walking down, I got down right to the God, and this sadhu walked up to me, you know, just like saffron clad, very simple, you know, looked like he probably just got out of the river himself a few minutes ago. And, and he looked at me as I'm walking towards him. Hmm. And you know, he liked the way that I was dressed. Okay. You know, just he, 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 he looked at me and said, this is, this is the culture, this, you know, this is the culture. And, then, and he says, you're, you're, you're with the heart. You're a Hare Krishna devotee, Hare yeah. Krishna, Hare Ram. And I said, yes. And he said, and then he started asking me about my lifestyle, you know, mm. my diet and my mm. sadhana and, and all these different things. And he's like, yes, this is it. And he was just sharing appreciation for Srila Prabhupada mm. that he wasn't compromising on these things. He wasn't just trying to get followers and present things sure. that he, you know, he was saying, this is the real authentic yoga tradition. Do you want it? I can give it to you. Mm. And, um, and this man could feel that I, it's, somehow he felt it a little in me and, and he could feel it in others that he's met and I could see there and he was really pleased with that. So I think Andrew Juno Swami is representing Srila Prabhupada very well here with being innovative in a, in a presentation. Pre this sure. is the happening event that's happening in, in, in uh, Rishikesh right now. It's like it fills out, you know, people are coming out of the woodworks to, to dive into it. It's authentic. At the same time, it's presented in a way that's... Um, people can easily understand it and participate in it. So yeah. maybe, why don't we bring in Jajuna Swami on? And, and yeah, hear please, him. Maharaj. We're asking you to unmute. Now you have to press the... Um, yes, welcome, Maharaj. Accept my obeisance. Thank How you. Are you. Thank you. I'm very good, Raghu. Thank you. Missing you. Missing, missing you. We're in you. India. You know, we're in India at the same time together, just different parts of the country, and Crossing. we just don't crisscross and meet, but that's uh, one of my strong desires. So at least we, we meet here on the airwaves. <laughs> yes, we did have one wonderful meeting once. We crisscrossed in Hadidwar. Remember that meeting, Maharaj? That's true. That That's was a special true. It's not far from here. Me. Yeah. Yeah. So, how's the festival going, and how can I get there next year? That's the question. You know, I I, I did invite you this year. You may forget you've got many invitations, <laughs> but I did want you to come. So, I think Krishna just fulfilled, fulfilled my desire. I can see you from here, and you can see me from there. But the festival is going really good. We're only in our uh, fourth day today, and uh, like Kastuba was saying, we're getting four, four fifty people every evening. And I think that's the magic. That, um, like you were saying, this is an authentic process. It's what we call the Yuga Dharma. It's the process for the age of Kali Yuga to chant the holy names. It's made simplified because our lives are so complicated, and it's something we can apply to our lives and become self-realized. So, authentic process, and the people who are coming are authentic spiritual seekers. It's something mm. like nitroglycerin, you know, there's that example. <laughs> They're both potent, but you put them together and you've got a big explosion. So this is kind of like, I would say the Hare Krishna explosion in Rishikesh. And I think the, the proof of that is that everyone who comes here without fail, they are completely satisfied. They walk away totally sac satisfied. Mm. Just today, I also met a man he, who was here this morning and you said, I came to Rishikesh. I knew it was a chakra 
a spiritual chakra, a place of spiritual energy in India. And I came here looking for something. And my first stop was the, you know, the Rishikesh Kirtan Fest. And I found it. So I'm not going anywhere else. I'm just going to stay here. There's a lot of things happening. But um, yeah, people, it, I think it's natural. You know, it's it's a natural thing. We're all, it's like George Harrison said one time in London. He said, everyone's, um, everyone, Devotees. everyone's a devotee of Krishna. Some people know it and some people don't. Mm -hmm. So this is the natural way to become Krishna conscious in the age of Christ. Singing, dancing, some philosophy and delicious vegetarian food. That's basically all you need in the age of Kali. And we're doing it at the right place, at the right time, with the right people. Mm, beautiful. I feel that. So is it all day affair or is it just an evening kirtan? What's going on there? It's an all day affair. Um, you know, we begin around nine o'clock in the morning. We uh, start with the kirtan and then we have another kirtan. We have, we have big kirtan <laughs> leaders here. Then we have workshops. Oh, that's we had great. a dance workshop the other day. We had a workshop on how to put a sari on. Oh. I've got 3,000 saris hanging, you know, in hangers just out, outside <laughs> the hall. The girls can come. How they did can that pick go, a sari they like. They can put it on and they can keep it. So that the, the saris are going like hot kit. Yeah. Oh. I got them all donated. What? Beautiful, beautiful saris. So they come in, they pick a sari. Every girl can pick a sari. The, our girls dress them. We put face painting on for free. The details are on right? for free. Yeah. The details. So, yeah, if you've got something nice and you you know beautiful and you've got a lot of it, you can easily share it with others. So we're sharing like that workshops in the morning. Today, Madhava did a workshop how to play cartels. <laughs> That's great. And people and need to know that one do. bad cartel player can ruin the whole kirtan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then the kirtans they start. Well, actually, starting right now. It's uh, what's almost five o'clock here, and they go to ten o'clock at night. Wow. Between 9 and 10, we serve a feast to every single person who comes. And, uh, you know, all the people that come, they they learn about the art of serving, the divine, serving the Lord, serving Krishna. So we have a lot of help washing dishes and cleaning up and mopping. It's like one big spiritual family here. We welcome it everyone really into that family and, of and, Krishna. And, 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 you know, I was wandering around last night, Maharaj, and just everyone may not notice it, but because I've for years attended things like this, I'm just watching to see all the different elements that it takes to make this work. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a, a lot. And I know how challenged that challenging that is to pull off. And you've all come, you know, it, it, there's so much to be said about when we come together um, in a, it, it, without ego, everybody in the mood to serve, to, to help others, mm -hmm. to give. And when it comes together really smooth like that, and everyone's in that mood, you just, it, it, it creates the spiritual world. It creates a, an atmosphere that's very different than what we normally experience in this world. And you feel it and it's very special and it radiates and it excites everyone and wakes something up in their heart. And you really have, have uh, done that in so many ways throughout your years of devotional service, but I see it still happening in really special ways at this Kirtan Festival. Mm -hmm. All right, Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Maharaj, maybe you could help us with one other thing. And that is we, you, you, I've all, we've always known you as someone with a very special devotion to the avatar of Sri Krishna, Lord Nishringadev, the half man, half lion, and his devoted um, servant, uh, little five-year-old Prahlad. And uh, just so happens that today, I mean, for weeks, but uh, we've been reading the, the seventh canto. And today we're in, in, we're getting to these really great verses, like right now we're in the Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu purport. And I think today we're going to read about, you know, chewing the chewed and, and so on. Could you share with us, I know something that you meditate on every day is Prahlad's devotion to, to Lord and Could you Could you share maybe a little bit of your thoughts about maybe beginning with Prahlad? And then maybe a little bit about Lord Nishringadev. Hmm. I think the Bhagavatam seventh canto is very interesting because it gives us um, a picture of a non-devotee, more than a non-devotee, a materialist, and we would say an asura, 
a demon. It's interesting that in the Bhagavad Purana, which is just about pure devotional service, we find an asura, like Hiranyakashipu, the bad guy. So when I first became a devotee, I was wondering, why is a bad guy, and, and the Bhagavatam describing his asuric tendencies, in a book like the like the Bhagavad Purana, like the Bhagavatam, it's all about pure devotional service, love of God, great saintly persons, mystic yogis. Why this Hiranyakashipu? But then I figured out uh, this, it, the story is entwined with his son, Prahlad Maharaj, who is a pure devotee of Vishnu, of Krishna. In fact, he's one of the 12 great authorities on the science of bhakti or devotion, according to the Bhagavatam. He's one of the 12 great authorities. Mm -hmm. So why this, you know, they're, they're intertwined as father and son. So why is that? Because the Bhagavatam is letting us choose which path we want to follow. We want to follow the path of materialism, which, you know, is best exemplified by Hiranyakashipu because he had everything and he had it now. But he wasn't using it in the service of God. He had no intention of, of acknowledging the existence of God. So he was the perfect materialist. And Prahlad Maharaj was the perfect devotee of the Lord. Mm. And you know, by reading the story, by hearing the pastime, you get to understand, I, I want to be by, like Prahlad Maharaj, because he was a saintly person, he was peaceful, he was self-satisfied, he was experiencing ecstasy in his loving relationship with Krishna, whereas Hirani Kashipu, he had everything, but he had nothing. He wasn't satisfied, he was angry, he was he was miserable, he was an autocrat, he was punishing and hurting other people. So, you know, it came to the point where the father was so envious of the happiness of his son being a devotee of God, he wanted to kill him. Here's a five-year-old boy. So he tried in every way to kill his son out of envy and anger, etc. But, you know, the little boy, Pilad, his only weapon was his faith in God. Mm. And he was praying constantly as they were trying to torture him and kill him. And the Lord Krishna, who we all know how beautiful Krishna is, threefold bending form, Shama Sundars, long wavy hair, his eyes to lotuses, to, like lotus flowers to his ears, his lips red like bimba fruit, his teeth are like rows of pearl, and he sways as he plays his flute. He became angry, seeing his devotee being persecuted. So he took an appropriate form, he took the form of half-man lion, it's a long story, he manifested that form as half man lion, and he came down and he saved his devotee, Prahlad. It's interesting. One incarnation for one devotee. That's how merciful the Lord is. Mm -hmm. One incarnation for one devotee. That's that's the essence of this. Shows how much the Lord actually loves his devotee. And there's a beautiful prayer in the Hari Bhakti Sutta. It's 1429 where we see Lord Shingadev speaking. And this is what he says. Although I am eternally liberated, I am bound by my devotees' ropes of love. In this way, although I am a jita, unconquerable, I become jita, conquered by them, my devotees. And although I cannot be controlled by anyone, I become fully controlled by them, by their love. So love is reciprocal. Prahlad Maharaj is a perfect example of a pure divine lover of God. And the Lord so much loved him that he came to this earth and, and he delivered him. Just like in Christianity, we hear that the Lord gave his beloved son. He so much loved the world. He gave his beloved son, Jesus Christ. So it's repeated in the world of bhakti. And Nishringadev came just for this one devotee, Prahlad Maharaj, to save him from the dangers and we're all in a similar situation we're in the grips of this material nature padam 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 there's danger at every step so mm. as we proceed in the path of devotion we ask lord nishringadev to protect us protect us from the enemies within obstacles to pure devotion like lust anger and greed and to protect us from the dangers of this world so we have enough time in our short lives to become uh, pure devotees of Krishna. 
Wonderful, Mars. Thank you so much. Uh, we look forward to diving into our verses today with all of that in mind. All right. Thank you very much. Maybe come thank visit so us at Super coming. Soul this year, Maharaj. Are you coming to the States? I'm coming in May. I'm coming to the Sadhu Sangha retreat in Dallas on Memorial Day weekend. So should you. That's <laughs> <laughs> our wisdom Please. retreat weekend, but... I gotta, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to you today, but because Madhava is coming up here, it'd be great to have you come up here with Madhava. We could do. We could do I would love to come up there. I would the, love to come up there. Thursday before uh, New York Rathiatra. Uh huh. What are you doing over Memorial Day weekend? We're gonna do a Wisdom of Sages retreat here. Why don't you do it at uh, at Sadhusanga at the Sadhusanga retreat with three thousand five hundred <laughs> devotees and and NBC and CBS and uh, BBC all coming in to film it? You can come in and be part of it. Really, yeah, that's I your thing. Let me talk. Aspiring to devotees and the wisdom of the sages, and you know you're our you're our link. Come on down with Kastuba to shoot your show there, and in, in the midst of you know the background of all these three thousand devotees chanting and dancing in Dallas. But all facilities on, for him. I was on the website yesterday. It did look pretty impressive. Yeah. Well, do come. It's not this year. Come next year. Okay, Maharaj. I'm looking forward to connecting with you. And uh, you're okay. always an inspiration to us. Thank you so much. Thank you. I've got to go Thank to Kirtan you. now. So okay. Thank you for the opportunity to speak a little bit. And we love you, Raghav. You're one Howdy of our heroes. I love you. All right, well. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Krishna. I love that man. I love that Thanks. man. You know, an incredible story, you know, and I just share a little bit about his story, which I never knew until he shared with us one day. You know, he, you know, he's like a Californian, Northern Californian, you know, just a likable guy. Grew up uh, close in a small town in Northern California. All his friends, in, you know, in the 60s. Um, and he, he grew up with a tight knit group of friends who all went to elementary school together, then junior high school together. And they were all sports minded and they were on the football team and they were like state champions in the football team. And it was just during Vietnam. And they all said, you know what, let's, you know, do the right thing and uh, support our country. And they all signed up for the war in Vietnam. You know, people were confused about what to do, but they all came of age. Their whole football team, all his best friends that he grew up with from from childhood joined and um they picked him out exclusively and said, okay, you, we're going to make you a sniper. And the rest of you guys were going to send to Vietnam. So he got special training. But he, and, but he was like, can I go with my friends? You know, it's like, it was, you, I'm, we got a, we got a plan. Behind. We got a, yeah, we got a plan for you. But immediately all his friends got killed. They all died and in one battle. In one battle immediately. And he was devastated and, imagine what that does to you. It's like losing people that you love, that you grew up with. And it just set him and, and in such a condition, they just said, you know, this is this guy, we can't even send him because he's too damaged already. And so he ended up getting released. And that I think propelled his spiritual pursuit. Right. And I think sometimes those tragedies and some, some of us are going through some, I mean, people are talking to me right now. People are going through their own personal tragedies right now. Let those tragedies be the, the trampoline that springs you high in your spiritual life. And a lot of times we hear these stories of people getting high in their spiritual life or really zeroing in on their spiritual pursuit. Let those tragedies not bury us. Let them sp have a, spring us forward on our spiritual trajectory. So, uh, yeah, I, I love this man. He's, he's a great soul. And uh, wherever he goes, he's creating a festival of the holy name and really spreading these ancient truths that people are going to India to look for. We don't have to, I feel like, I feel like pulling on the Indians aside, but huddling up and say, listen, don't make the green smoothies. You, you don't have to get a <laughs> yoga alliance certified. All we want is spiritual truth. Don't make, don't bend for our crazy whims. Just give what India has always offered for millennium. That's what we're hungry for. All right. Moving on. Do you have to figure everything out? Do we have to figure everything out here? <laughs> Mo Prime Minister Modi, let's have a meeting. I got to talk to you. <laughs> All right, Baba. We could do the nugget. Should we do the nugget? I want to bathe with you. I know that sounds weird out of context. Excuse but me? In context, it makes sense. 
I want to bathe with you. I want to take a morning bath with you. That sounds weird, but it also sounds incredibly intelligent. I want to take a morning bath with Costuba. Take that away. Boom. I haven't been bathing exactly in the morning. When I go down there in the morning, I'm not bathing. It's really cold down there. You know what? Um, That's where I've you do bathing. your Wim Hof breathing, sir. Your pranayam. <laughs> Who Wim Hof says he took it all from India also, by the way. Well, I've been bathing more like 11 or 1130 when there's a little okay. sun. It's still very cold. <laughs> I get that. You know what? But it's, it's, it's temporary it's and it's wonderful. And, you know, did you did you pick up on this, Mara? He quoted something. Kostuba quoted something to, from, from the Yamuna Asikam. Do you know that? The breezes oh, coming yeah. from the Ganga are enough to purify the consciousness. Raghunath, I was I went down this morning. It was very, I met that one sadhu. Felt like I got a little blessing from him. You did get a little then blessing. I, oh. Then I sat down. There's this one tree that's growing out of the bathing got there. Hmm. And, and the winds are so heavy that I sat right next to that tree just hoping it was going to like block the wind a little bit, you know? Yeah. And... And I just sat there and I took into mind your and my, you know, conviction, no more inattentive chanting, mm -mm. let's focus. And, and, I, and, and with that conviction, I felt like I wasn't just doing what I had to do, but I was part of the yoga tradition, yeah. sitting on the banks of the Ganga in Rishikesh in focused meditation, you know? Nice. And, and you feel like, you not only feel like you're part of that tradition, but you feel like you're being supported by that tradition. Mm. You feel like you're in your, you know, just like um, in bicycle racing or even car racing, you know, you get behind someone and it creates that draft. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and you get pulled by the momentum of those that have come before you. Be sure the current. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yoga simply by remembering the great souls before us, we get caught up in their draft. And in a place like this, it's so easy to remember them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I sat there and I just chanted and, and I really, and, and the, sometimes the breezes were cold and sometimes, I don't know what it was, the breeze felt warm. It was like changing, you know, and I, and I was just, and I was also realizing that this tree has Witnessed. probably been Witnessed. sitting here for a couple hundred years or something like that. Yeah. And, and, and so many sadhus have come and, touched this tree, sat under the shade of this tree, meditated by this tree. Everything feels special. Everything sure. has its connection to that center in a very profound way. It makes uh, your, my, it's making my time here just super enriched, you know, just super enriched. You know, I used that analogy yesterday of the Trader Joe's bathroom, how in the Trader Joe's bathroom in Albany, there's a picture of where Trader Joe's is, but what it was like, you know, 75 years ago, and there were these beautiful farms. And it, back then, it was really easy to remember, this is farmland. You know, this is a shaker village. This is, these are simple houses that, these are barns that were here and silos that were here. So, yeah, India is getting covered, but by taking shelter in this Kirtan festival, taking shelter of the Ganga, and that's what I do when I take a group to Rishikesh, yeah. I isolate people. We go to our hotel, which is right on the bank of the Ganga, nice. and then we... And it's warmer there in October. But we okay. in the Ganga. We pray at the Ganga. You know, we have Kirtan at the Ganga. You can't even see anything else except the jungle. And then we do go into the town of Rishikesh. It's it's overwhelming. It's like going to Trader Joe's and some there's the cafes and there's you get you get caught up in the shopping. And we just say, okay, now we're gonna sit at the Ganga and we're just gonna sing. And that holy name protects us. You know what I mean? And that's why it's important yes. to have teachers in our life and. The, the festivals like this, because we go in and all of a sudden we're shepherded. We're shepherded to a, a safe place where you can re-enter into what it was like millennia, millennia ago, or even 150 millennia. years ago, when you felt the shelter of guru, and when you felt the shelter of the holy name, when you felt the shelter of a wisdom culture, when you feel like this is a pilgrimage. Yeah. And not just like, okay, I'm here and that's a beautiful architecture. And let's do the same uh, junk that we talk about the same stupid things. Talk about the same thing. I want someone to say no. Coffee. You don't talk like that. Yeah. You know, give me a cup of coffee. Yeah. Come here. Oh, coffee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. I'm trying to no, drag Mara. everybody down. <laughs> Rise up, Miss Mara. <laughs> Now we have a uh, little Karuna, ten years old here, saying that today she took a cold shower and it was cold. 
Good, she Karuna. Sh- good for you. Austerity she is the, the wealth of the strongest breathing in her life, but she said, but it felt great afterwards. Now, Karuna, I was with Karuna when she was taking her cold Gunga Snan down in, in uh, Mayapur. Karuna, we got to bring up to here to Rishikesh. It's a lot colder. It's a little okay, colder, so Karuna. Yourself. She's practicing keep, for next year. Keep practicing, yeah. Keep practicing. Yeah. Okay, Kostuba. Are you, you going to bathe? Are, wait, once, a second, wait a second. Wait a second. Why? Are you going to bathe today? I already did. You already did. Okay, tomorrow, double it. Twice. Bathe once twice? Bathe twice. Yeah, you're at the Ganga. There, there's no reason not to bathe <laughs> three times at the Ganga. Double it. <laughs> Come on. I can't believe well, I baby. doubled it by doing it today. That was like twice. You know, now it's twice. And then I'll do it again tomorrow. <laughs> That'll be a 50% increase. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. man. Are we going to do the nugget? You want to do the nugget? No, let's Can go do the Bob nugget. Time. Okay. Although nugget he, it's Bob almost time. like he mentioned the nugget. Did you notice that? I didn't notice. Or maybe I did, but I don't remember. Got to listen. Got to listen. Okay, we're gonna joke. Okay, brother. <laughs> joking, you're good. All right, let's go right to the Bhagavatam um, because we're on fire today. All right, the so Bhagavatam, we're in a good spot. Hit it. Hit it. Narayanam the Muskritianaram, Chayavanarotamam, Devim, Saraswatim, Vyasam, Tatoja Yam Madirayat. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest? One should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord, Narayan, unto Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. Unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. I bet Narayan right? Rishi came here to Rishikesh, right? And just probably wandered. Narayan whether, Rishi whether it was lived one of them or two of them. He lived in Bajranath. Yeah, but do you think he never came down here? Of course he did. Or they did? They Either did. Way? They did. They, well, they were always together. They were inseparable friends. Are they two or are they one? We don't know. No, they're two. They're two. Narayan Rishi. Sometimes it's mentioned as one. I, I would just come on. Nasta prayesha badreshu nityam bhagavat sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtaki by regular attendance and classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated and loving service to the supreme lord who is praised with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact Om Ajnana Tamarandasya Ajnana Anjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Mudatam Yena Tazmai Shri Gurabeda Maha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 5, Text 23 to 24. And we're diving into the purports, and Kastuba was giving highlights of these purports. Oh, and I was yeah. sitting with my hands folded tapping my fingers together excited okay you're tapping now yeah i'm tapping okay we're 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 hearing about the nine processes of devotional service that were mentioned by little boy perlad and uh and we're up to number six which is vandanam which means mara Making me look bad. Offering prayers. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Offering prayers. <laughs> very good. Very good. You're, you're making me look bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Vandanam. Offering prayers are not so important, right? Here's what Prabhupada some excerpt of what he wrote about. It. Hmm. Although prayers are are part of deity worship, right? Because all the all the items are offered with prayer. They may be considered separately like the other items, such as hearing and chanting, and therefore separate statements are given here with hmm. the Lord has unlimited transcendental qualities and opulences and one who feels influenced by the Lord's qualities in various activities offers prayers to the Lord it's it's hmm. almost spontaneous it sounds like right like if you if you get moved you feel influenced sure by the Lord's qualities. I'm influenced by your compassion I'm influenced by your beauty I'm influenced by your your wonder you know I mean in so many different ways then you naturally speak and, and you naturally speak, you know, the, the, the more you're in tune with it, the more it's like poetry, you know, mm. um, in this way, one becomes successful. That's all it takes. Just a little, just a little opening up of the heart. But you know, right. I, I, you and I have said this quite a few times on the show that when we would read the Bhagavatam years and years ago, we were more following the plot. Right. Um, We're looking for the plot. And when it gets to a place where someone's just offering prayers for 30 pages, we're like, okay, skip this part. Let's get back to the story. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> but now we realize the plot is really just setting up these prayers and all of the rich information is right in these prayers. I like the way you and, put that. The plot is setting up for the prayers. Yeah. 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 Framing it out, you know, and and, and um, well, it's like we approach God and, and most religions you hear off, oftentimes and all most of Hinduism as well, mm -hmm. not excluding Hinduism. It's all like, I need help. Please help me. I'm my love life is devastated. I'm sick. My brother's sick. Uh, someone's dying. I'm dying. You know, I, I'm starving. Uh, help me get a better house. Help me get a better car. Got, it's just petitioning God for stuff health, you know, good marriage, help my son, whatever it is. Yeah. But sometimes you'll get to this point and, and I, you do, especially when you read these pastimes where you just want to appreciate God. And sometimes, I'll tell you we, get, and sometimes we get that with even without the Bhagavatam, people can go to the Grand Canyon and be like, this is beautiful. Nature is beautiful. Or um, my, 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 I feel great gratitude in what I'm doing in my life. But I know when we practice these prayers, you know, which you know, me and Mary have been doing since we've been doing puja together, you just practice these yeah. fundamentals, these prayers. After the puja, you sit and you read some prayers. You read some prayers to you, the Yamuna, read some prayers to Govardhan, read some prayers to uh, Brinda, Brindavan. And we just do them almost like in a, in to try to develop that appreciation. But then the appreciation starts to take over. And then when you're at the Yamuna or you're at Govardhan or you're in Brindavan, you can chant these prayers and you're like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And then pull the trigger. And, 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 and pull the trigger. And it's not only about I need this, help me with this, I'm suffering like this. Although that will come out. But it's almost like if every time I see you, Gustavo, is like, can I every time I see you, I, I can't be can I borrow four dollars? Hey, Gustavo, you got anything to eat? Anything to eat in this house, Gustavo? It's like, stop. It's just like, what are we treating Bad God like? Like, like uh, it's just like I'm Kramer and I'm coming over to beg for stuff. <laughs> I'm <laughs> don't treat God like Jerry and don't be Kramer to God, you know, have some appreciation. And we develop appreciation by hearing about the Lord, hearing about the Lord's pastimes, singing the Kirtan, singing the Leela Kirtan, you know, the pastimes of Krishna. And then we just can't help but appreciate God. I love it. Rogan. You know, I, in a sense, what I'm hearing from you right now is we always have to be looking for what is it now, what now do I have to, uh, where, where now do I have to take it to the next level? Mm. And you and I were just speaking yesterday, I think it was, when both of us were saying enough of this inattentive chanting. We've been doing mm. it for 35 years. We can no longer tolerate this anymore. From now on, we do not do that. It, it makes me sick to my stomach. I feel nauseous if I'm not going to move <laughs> forward. Right. And, 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 and that a little bit of that self disgust, you know, <laughs> like, you know, nowadays we live in a world where we're like, no, you're beautiful. Tell yourself you're beautiful. No, a you're little beautiful. bit of like, I'm sick of where I'm at. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it all. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, it's interesting. Sick That's how we started this podcast. Because we were I'm reading a little of... bit of this, or a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Oh, yeah. Mara was coming over with uh, Bhakta Mike. We were reading a little bit of that. And then we just said, let's read the Bhagavatam. The Bhagavatam cool. is where it's at. Let's yeah. sit and read the Bhagavatam every day. That's how this whole podcast started. That's how it started. Yeah. And, and, and you get so, fed up and you get sick. I've been in this game for a while and I still, can, you know, I wear the dhotis. I put on the T-lock. I, you know, I go to the kirtans, but... Let's get serious about this facet and why not go right to the seed, right to the kernel, right to the fountainhead, right? The right, right to the spring source, which is there you go. The holy name. Everything comes from this. OK. And and so what you're saying about prayer is our we have to elevate our prayer. We rather than asking for things, we need to, as Prabhupada's saying here, we need to feel influenced by the Lord's qualities and various activities. Various activities means the, his Leela. What he does, yeah, yeah, which you have to read about in the Bhagavatam. We need to feel influenced by that, and then we'll spot, we'll begin to offer prayer, either reading the prayers that are there in the Bhagavatam and feeling them ourselves, sure, or also speaking our own words and opening up our relationship with God, so that it's not just a theoretical thing that we talk about, but actually we talk to each other, you know, and and open it, it up. It's not yeah. like one has to exist without the other. You can yeah. still ask God for stuff, for help, for wealth. For, you can still <laughs> ask God for stuff. 
but just don't you just let have that to be, be disgusted with yourself when you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and but 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 add those add those uh, traditional prayers because those train the mind of how to think, and then also speak heartfelt prayers. Yeah, a and then if you have to petition God for something, you, hey, by the way, can you throw me a little something on the side too? Because I really <laughs> you don't have to do that. I'm really so. broke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's, let, let's move on. Uh oh. He's losing it. He's losing it. Oh. Okay. Um, next practice process of devotional service, number seven, dasyam. 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 Means, you know, this is something that in our world that you and I grew up in, Raghunath. Yeah. We generally we didn't like our teachers very much, and we harassed. Wait, 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 wait. Them. Not in bhakti. We loved our no, teachers. No, no, no. I'm Clarify saying growing it. up in school. In school, no, grew up in school. Like, no, we were like anti teacher. Anti teacher. I mean, there was nothing there that was inspiring us. You know, at I least mean, let's put the blame on them. <laughs> let's keep yeah, it over there. It, it was their fault <laughs> that I flunked those classes. <laughs> And, and, um, and in general, we don't like the idea of having to, we consider to be the served is better than being the servant. Well, it's not that they, you know, here's the deal. I, I liked my teachers. I, I can't speak. Okay. You can't speak for me. I did like my mm -hmm. teachers. I just didn't know where it was all going. Like, what right. is the point to become very educated? Where, what, what's the win? Is it just to make a better living than the guy who's not studying harder? That that's all. Well. It's not like I disliked okay. them or thought they I disliked them <laughs> I, or not teaching. Or they were teaching in a faulty way. I just felt yeah. like, where are we going with all this? But, well, here's here's where I'm going with it. Ragnar, is that the idea to serve the idea to be even the menial servant? To us, it can sound repulsive. It's like that's what you don't want to happen to you in yeah. life. That's why you got to go out and make a lot of money. So you don't end don't up in have position. to be the servant. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 Americans are, you know what Americans also hate? They hate the concept of bowing down. You can bow down. Bow down. They're like, so, what? Well, never bow down. At showing anymore. them respect <laughs> formally like that. Just absolutely. You know, yeah. you know, we, so well, if you think about it, we bow down so much more than the ordinary people. <laughs> we're bowing down like all the time <laughs> so so but here the idea is if there's someone that you deeply respect and deeply love yeah there is a joy in serving them because that's the expression of your love love is a wonderful feeling to have and when you have that love in the within the context of i see you as my superior i i love you with respect then to that that right there is called that's a that's a particular rasa that's a particular flavor of love and this seventh one dasya means to love god in that um in in that that particular variety mm -hmm. i love you as a servant loves the one that they they hold dear in their heart so this is part of a Prabhupada rice it's very wholesome it's very satisfying you know, that, that you can even see just a little bit in our talk with Indra Juma Swami. It's like, Maharaj, you're someone we've respected for so many years, you know? Yeah. I felt when I walked into that, um, you know, I came in late the day I arrived here yeah. in Rishikesh. Yeah. And it was a rainy night and I went out to that, uh, I, I went out to that uh, Ganga Puja. Yeah. And I came in late, you know, out of the rain into that room of 400 people chanting in ecstasy and Indra Dumna Swami sitting on the other side of the room. And I just looked at him up there and in my heart, I felt an appreciation for him that yeah. look at you, you were my senior monk, right? You were, you were the friend of my guru who I served, like, you know, who I, of whom I was a servant. Yeah. I see you with that, with a similar type of respect which is part of the etiquette of our of our lineage right and and um and i and i relished that feeling of uh, there was a joyful loving feeling in my heart that said look at him i'm so happy that you know he's maybe 75 now or something like that and he's it's like still... you saw a loving uncle you saw a loving uncle yeah 
Yeah, and that's 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 something of dasyam. You know, what can I do for you? When I when when I bow down to you, I feel good in my heart. When I stand up with folded palms, I feel good in my heart. That's that's that that's the because there's a rasa there, you know, to to have someone in your life that you deeply respect and and love that way. Sure. So one can love God that way. And so Prabhupada writes here, he says, there is the following statement in regard to assisting the Lord as a servant. After many, many thousands of births, when one comes to understand that he is an eternal servant of Krishna, one can deliver others from this universe. If you just have that, you, you, can, you can give people something of so much value. If one simply continues to think that he is the eternal servant of Krishna, even without performing the other processes of, of devotional service, then they can attain full success for simply by this feeling one could perform all nine processes of devotional service. Just this feeling. Me like, I love me like you he, as your servant. Me like you, Kostuba. The yeah. problem is what you're saying makes so much sense. Most people, most people don't even have the map. Don't even have the map yeah. that there even is a map. There, most people don't even know there <laughs> don't is. Don't even a know map. that there's a map. <laughs> they don't even know there's a map. What to speak of a direction? What to speak of? The directions are all confusing. It's like, is it uh, raise my is material Shana? life? Or is it to raise a family? Is it to just have fun? Everyone's everyone's got some. They're not even sure of their material map. And then you get some like life coaches like, you need to work on your map. You need to be successful and you need to be abundant and you need to be double doubling whatever you're making. Double that. <laughs> and, and and the thing that they're trying to that create kind of a map, but there already is a map. The Veda, the Vedas teach a map. There is a way and you, you, you probably use it. What, what, what was it? Uh, get, there is a, oh, one can deliver others from this universe. I mean, mm -hmm. how many people go into a mall and say, how many people are looking here at the mall to deliver, be delivered from this universe? That's the actual map, because what's this universe? It's a map of gross sense gratification, dragging us down, crippling our life, breaking our hearts, or a subtle type of materialism where we're envious of other people. We're in a state of competition. Uh, we're, mm. we're, we're, we're carrying deep resentments in our hearts. I'm, I'm, I'm looking to be offended on a regular basis. I'm insecure. I just want to be happy. How can I be happy? And everyone's offering these different maps. Guess what? Try the Vedic map. You're going to be quite impressed. It really works. It really works. There is a direction. And even though we, we've been driving around with no direction, we don't even know there. Imagine imagine just someone plops you in a foreign country and just says drive. Okay. Like where? Anywhere. Well, where is it going? Are you... That's it. We don't even know what country we've been dropped off in. Or a direction. Map. 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 Get a map. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Map. <laughs> so that's the map. Deliver others from this universe. Okay. Deliver yourself from this universe. There you go. All right. That was a little something about dasyam. Okay. Now, you know, sakyam. Yeah. Sakyam. Sakyam means Mara. Mara, don't look. Friendship. Well done, Mara. <laughs> I was blocking the <laughs> screen. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Prabhupada writes, so one can love God not only as, you see, there's a difference between loving God and serving God mm. in a mood of dasyam, I am your servant. That's the conception. And then the conception of sakim, I am your friend. Right. I am your friend. Okay. In regard to worshiping the Lord as a friend, the Augustia Samhita, when's the last time you picked up the old Augustia Samhita? Right? I have picked it up. My friend, not that long <laughs> okay. ago. Truthfully, I'm serious. For real? Yeah. Oh, and Where it's were you? the uh, the Augustia Gita. Oh, this is Augustia Samhita. This is, might be different. Samhita states that a devotee engaged in performing devotional service by shravanam and kirtanam, hearing and chanting, sometimes wants to see the Lord personally, and for the per and for this purpose, he resides in the temple. Interesting. Oh, I was waiting. I, wait a second. I was thinking of the uh yeah. Augustia, not Augustia. Forget it. No. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Astabakra Gita. Astabakra Gita. 
You're in the middle of something very deep. And I just said, OK, <laughs> Asta Vakra Gita. I have Thank never you. picked up the Augusta Gita, Samhita. Samhita. Yeah. Augusta okay. was the one who lifted Govardhan and brought Govardhan to Braj. That was Augusta. Thank you. For that. Oh, I was Palatia. Forget it. I'm really... <laughs> <laughs> you're really squirrel upon squirrel <laughs> and all the squirrels are wrong that's like top of deformed it. squirrel upon deformed squirrel <laughs> that was a that was a deformed squirrel giving birth to another dis deformed squirrel <laughs> <laughs> don't, okay. don't be cruel to squirrels um, uh so here it's so Prabhupada said I may have this feeling of suffering and it makes me want to live in the temple because I, I guess I'm near Krishna in, in the form of the deity I suppose okay um Elsewhere, there is a statement, Oh, my Lord, Supreme Personality, God, an eternal friend. Although you are full of bliss and knowledge, mm -hmm. you've become the friend of the residents of Vrindavan. Like, yeah. once you're already full in yourself, why do you got to find friends? Right? But yeah. even though you're full in your, in, in, in your bliss, you, you become the friend of all the, the residents of Vrindavan. How fortunate are these devotees? Prabhupada writes, in this statement, the word friend, quote, unquote, is specifically used to indicate intense love. Mm. Friendship, therefore, is better than servitude. In the stage above Dhasya Rasa, the devotee accepts the Supreme Personality God as a friend. This is not at all astonishing, for when a devotee is, in, is pure in heart, the opulence of his worship of the deity diminishes mm. as spontaneous love for the Personality of God manifests. So, so I'm no longer doing this ritualistic practice to bring my mind to a certain platform because my mind's already on that platform mm. and I'm relating to God with love as a friend. Um, love that. You know, it's a great concept that God is actually your friend. What's, how's that song go about it's, friend again? Thanks for being a friend. Is that the one? Um, oh, you don't do that. You got a friend. <laughs> that one? I got him stuck. You just call out my name. <laughs> Just, you just call out my name and you know where I've ever been. I'll be running to see you again. Would you spring, summer, or fall, or monsoon season? All you got yeah, you to just do is call. Quick, right? and then you move on. There you, huh? okay. you drop it and then you well, well, I know, I, I, you, but that one was worth um, teasing out because the <laughs> lyrics actually had to do. All you got to do is call. Call out my name. Okay. <laughs> right. Oh, good one. I gotcha. Okay. I'm Call out my name. That's now. what we say. Call out the name of Lord Krishna. Yes. Anyway, Krishna okay, is so the Prabhupada supreme continues. friend. I love it. I love that instead of Krishna is the supreme authority. Who, you know what I mean? We're scared of authority. Have a problem with authority? I do. I do have a problem with authority. <laughs> okay. I like friends better. All right. Well, he continued. Prabhupada continues. Um, he says, in the stage above Dasira, so the devotee accepts the supreme personality of God as a friend. This is not at all astonishing. For when a devotee is pure in heart, the opulence of his worship and deity of the deity diminishes as a spontaneous love for the personality of God manifests. In this regard, Sridhar Swami, very important commentator on Srimad Bhagavatam, yeah. mentions Sri Dhamma Vipra, mm -hmm. who was a schoolmate of Krishna's, I believe. Krishna's who expressed, friend. Who's Krishna's friend. Who's Krishna's friend. Who expressed to himself his feelings of obligation, thinking, Life after life, may I be connected with Krishna in this friendly attitude. What else? I'm fulfilled. I don't need anything more. I just need Krishna as my friend. All right, listen to this. If the sky above you grows dark and full of clouds and the old north wind begins to blow. Oh, come on, Rogan. You don't have time for this. together and call my name out loud. <laughs> All right. Soon, you'll hear me knocking at your door. All Boom. right, right. Now we got just one minute left. Why don't we read the the ninth one? Atman. Okay. Are you are you frozen, sir? He's frozen. I'll read Atman Avedanam and he'll come back. Okay. Atman Avedanam. Or I can read the rest of these lyrics. <laughs> Kastub is gone. <laughs> come on, Mary, you're on now. Ready? Atman Avedanam. The word Atman Avedanam refers to the stage at which one who has no motive other than to serve the Lord, surrenders everything to the Lord and performs his activity only to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such a devotee is like a cow that is cared for by its master. When cared for by its master, a cow is not in anxiety over its maintenance. 
right? Such a cow is always devoted to its master and it never acts independently, but only for the master's benefit. You know, by the way, we, we were just in India and um, all these cats, you know, Americans are like, yeah, what well, are these cows in the street? They're not, oftentimes these cows are not roaming. They're, they're actually cared for, but they let them out. But a, a village has built up around the pasture. And so now they're just going into the street. They do their thing in the day, but they all come back at night, just like, like the chickens come back to their uh, roosting. So the cows come back and they're cared for. Um, so, yeah, and especially if they have an affectionate relationship with their master. And I tell that story about my friend who used to have a cow who gave milk. He had one calf, but that cow gave milk for like 13 years just because he just felt like, well, this I, this guy's dependent on me, too, and he loves me. And that was the relationship. Such a cow is always devoted to its master and it never acts independently, but only for the master's benefit. Some devotees, make sure Kostuba is not trying to yeah. get in. Okay. Some devotees, therefore, consider dedication of the body to the Lord to be Atman Avedadam. And as stated in the book known as Bhakti Viveka, sometimes dedication of the soul of the soul to the Lord is called Atman Avedadam. The best examples of Adam Avedam are found in Bali Maharaj and out in Barish Maharaj. So Bali Maharaj was, um, he, he fully surrendered. That's when the, the uh, um, Trivikram came in the form of a dwarf, a little person, and he took three steps of land. And Bali Maharaj just surrendered everything to the Lord. And of course, Ambarish Maharaj, who was, um, he was trying to please the Lord and then, uh, not Sukracharya, um, Durvas Muni. Thank you. Durvas Muni got offended and uh, because he was fasting and he was uh, not, uh, he, he took a glass of water to break his fast. And um, Durvas got really angry and he went to curse and he threw the fireball at Ambarish. But Lord Vishnu was also very supportive of Ambarish because he was a pure devotee. He's given Ambarish, even though he was a king. And, you know, when you think of a king, they have lots of, quote, stuff. But everything that he had, he offered to God. We don't care if you have stuff in the material world. We, we say stuff won't make you happy, but sometimes people in a position, they get born into a family filled with a lot of stuff, or they have a career that they get a lot of stuff in this world. Generally, they only keep the stuff that really is significant to them. But the idea is whatever stuff you have, you just use it in service of the Lord, and it purifies your stuff. Last sentence. You have one sentence have left. have one sentence last. Atman Avedanam is also sometimes found in the behavior of Rukmini Devi at Dwarka. Hmm. Rukmini, given everything. Okay, but it's 7.03. So Mara, I don't know where Kastuba is. He's probably bathing right now. <laughs> I got a lot of takeaways today. Is one of them, I want to bathe with Kastuba? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and start with that one. I want to bathe with Kastuba. <laughs> You know, we use this word bathing, you know, like like in America, if you've taken a bath with someone, it's different. But I can say I take a, want to take a bath with Kostuba. That's completely normal in Vaishnav talk. All right, Krishna. OK. Um, all right. You get an authentic experience from bona fide parampara. Yep, you do. Yes, you do. Everyone is a Krishna devotee. Some know it, some don't. Yeah, and, and it's our job to remember it in ourselves and extend a loving hand to someone else. That's why today is Tell a Friend Tuesday. <laughs> tell a friend about this podcast today. I'm serious. And if you say, well, I'm already telling a friend, double that, double that. Go ahead. <laughs> All you need is kirtan, dancing, and prashadam. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes our only weapon is faith in God, like little Prahlad. Yeah. Let your tragedy be your trampoline to spiritual life. Trampoline it. Remember the great souls that came before us to get pulled in their draft. Their current, perhaps. <laughs> Take shelter of the Ganga and the holy name. Mm. Pull the trigger on prayers of appreciation for God. Pull it. <laughs> Self-disgust can be healthy. Self-disgust, yeah. Try the Vedic map. It works. Triple it. <laughs> Got a problem with authority? Krishna is the supreme friend. Bow down, mister. 
And don't be Kramer to God. Don't be Kramer to God. Bathe with Kostuba, darn it. Come on. We're all going to bathe with Kostuba. Let's all make a vow to that. Listen, tell a friend. It's Tuesday. We want this podcast to expand because there's a lot to offer. And we're setting up a whole new Wisdom of the Sages platform soon. And it's going to be very, we're, we're working on education. And that's what we all need. I'm noticing that myself. I need to be more educated in this stuff. I need to go deeper. And this, this well goes very, very deep. And it gets sweeter. The water gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter until it gets to a, a point of nectar. Hmm? Hey, Mayor, you're on. Say something uh, inspiring. I just said all the inspiring things I've taken away from this show. I'm going right. to you want from me. Well, let's tell a friend. Let's share. You know, you go to YouTube channel and you copy that podcast down after Mara uploads it and you copy it and share a link and you go to a friend and say, hey, check this out. I think you're going to like this. One of the guys is a little crazy. The other guy is pretty sober. Mara's very nice. <laughs> uh, 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 there's a good chance to say that. Punk to Monk comes out. It's actually, I'm gonna, if you're gonna, if I'm gonna see you in Tampa or Florida, I'm gonna have some copies Ooh. for sale so you can get it. And if you're thinking about getting it, I would just say double that. Double that, why not? Double that and give it to friends. Some people are like, why well, I already did it? I already got two. Okay, double it. Double it. Because it's Tuesday. Double it. Triple it Tuesday. Triple it Tuesday. 